Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch this um, short video. Uh, this is to tie in with Safer Internet Day and this is all about raising awareness of online safety uh, with parents and carers uh, for all students at Ormston Bolingbrook Academy. Um, Safer Internet Day is a global um, event which is marked by many organisations, not just schools, uh, with the aim of raising awareness about online safety, particularly for young people. Uh, and I'm going to do a short presentation going forward uh, which will hopefully do just that and raise some awareness for you all. Um, so just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Liam Hussey, I am the e-safety coordinator for Ormiston Bollingbrook Academy. Uh, I'm also one of the teaching staff. Um, I teach computer science and business studies um, and part of my role within school uh, in terms of e-safety coordinators to work with the safeguarding team and the pastoral team to lead on digital safeguarding and any safeguarding matters which link to the online world. So um, what I want to introduce you to is the what we call the four C's of online safety, the four main areas of um, potential concern around online safety. Now, the way I'm doing this, I'm going to try and keep this quite brief in terms of the, uh, the video itself, but you can obviously pause this at any point to take note of further information that, that, you, uh, that you wish. Um, but basically the four C's of online safety come down to the content that young people are exposed to online, uh, you know, whether it's inappropriate, whether it's photographic content, whether it's written, whether it's video or anything else. Uh, the contact, uh, so the idea of online grooming, strangers, um, you know, coercion online with uh, unknown people or in some cases with known people uh, can be a cause for concern. We've then got conduct and the idea of a digital footprint, that, uh, you know, things that young people say and do online and uh, posts that they share online potentially jeopardise their online conduct and, and, and bring the, can bring themselves into disrepute. And then finally, a new addition to the, um, the four C's, uh, the latest edition, which was only added in September 2021, is commercialism. And as the name suggests, that's all to do with um, financial risk online to young people. And I will uh, explain commercialism in a bit more detail going forward. So that's the four C's of online safety, uh, which every sort of young person in, in the country is uh, exposed to in general. Um, within my role at school, uh, I've developed and expanded on those concerns discussed just now to look at um, a wider range of online safety issues. So we, we encompass the four C's with that, um, but there are, as you can see, a range of other issues linked to the internet and, and to the online world and to digital safeguarding, which are potential areas of concern. So things like disinformation and, and you know the idea of fake news or unreliable news online and information, overuse of technology online, pressure, uh, impersonation, sexting, uh, harassment and abuse. Okay, you can see them all on there. And there's a short description for each one of you who would like to pause and, and find out a bit more uh, about any of those. Um, what I want to go through uh, is some practical tips for parents and kids. I want to try and make this video cast um, basically, you know, as practical as possible, rather than just giving you statistics and, and telling you that the insect can have its barriers and, and it can have its causes for concern. I want to give you more practical advice. So, um, first bit of advice I would recommend to all parents uh, for keeping young people safe online is to download the Safer Schools app and I'll come to that um, towards the end of the presentation and give you some guidance on how you can get it and uh, what it involves. I think like anything it's important that we hold frequent conversations about what your children are doing online and also set boundaries for what's safe and what's acceptable and, and what isn't. Um, it's also important to ensure that your privacy settings on, on platforms that your young people use uh, are all in place and privacy settings are, are you know, a lockdown as far as can be. We know that young people use a wide range of platforms, the likes of your social media ones, potentially gaming platforms, etc. Um, we do need to make sure that all privacy settings are in place and, and are as protective as can be. Um, I think it's really important that your young people are well aware of the statements of online stranger presents an online danger. I'm going to talk a bit about this as we go through and I will keep referring back to that. Um, but it is important, I think, that you check that your children are not associating with unwanted or unknown individuals online. Um, obviously online conduct can be a cause for concern and we talked about that earlier on um, but it is important to have conversations with your children at home about their safety and their reputation can be uh, jeopardised by their own online conduct and they need to be mindful of that. 
Um, and uh, you know, similar to about being disrespectful towards other people is a potential cause for concern. And and you know, number six really links to acts of cyberbullying and things like that. Um, you know, the idea of only say and do what you would do in person and only treat people online as you would expect to be treated online yourself and also how you'd expect to be treated in person, really. Um, I think it's important that young people don't spend too much time online and take regular breaks away from devices, you know, uh, time away for family time, for study time, for relaxation, uh, for physical exercise, and I think that's all in the interest of well-being all round in terms of physical well-being, mental well-being, academic well-being, etc. Um, I think it's really important, and I touched on uh, disinformation before, I think it's really important that we teach our young people that not everything that we see online is reliable or is, is completely true. Uh, and this is not just a COVID thing, you know, this is this has been a problem for a long time. Uh, the idea of fake news and, and unreliable statistics broadcast online. And, um, you know, I think it's important that young people know to question things that they see online and to think twice and to look at a range of sources and, and to use reliable sources as well, rather than some unreliable ones which exist on the internet. Um, obviously, young people need to protect their own online safety uh, and never share personal information or, or images online. Uh, anything that can identify them, so phone numbers, email addresses, contact details shared with unknown people, um, and also images, even images down to images of them in school uniform. It makes them identifiable uh, to potential changes and, and causes uh, a potential risk, especially around online contact. And obviously, um, just like we would expect young people to do, um, with any other concerns that they've got. We need to ensure that young people know to report any concerns and to tell and to share any concerns that happen online with a trusted adult um, you know, at home and educate them that they've done nothing wrong themselves, um, but they do need to speak out if something concerns them and that they will be supported. And that's certainly a message that we uh, advocate at school. Um, so I talked earlier on about commercialism being the latest addition to uh, online safety concerns. Um, it's a wide covering area really in terms of commercialism obviously all links to finances but it's things like uh, young people getting involved in gambling online there's also been uh, cases of young people following adverts that they see online and making purchases also scams and hacking and phishing and, and uh, email scams and things like that um, present a, uh, a commercial risk and I think probably the most prominent commercial risk for young people is in-game purchases or in-app purchases so to move from one level of a game to another one or to accelerate your progress in a game you can buy coins and buy tokens and things like that which will um, you know move you up leaderboards etc um, but purchasing them tokens can actually be quite expensive and there have been cases where young people have racked up some quite considerate um, debts through purchasing in games and in apps and I think it's important that settings are in place to not facilitate that really because it is very difficult if not impossible to get money back once it's been sent and once it's been purchased. Um, one that I do want to start talking about now is a couple of platforms that are popular with young people and some of the potential dangers and areas of concern with them. Um, first one going to be TikTok and, and live streams. Um, when a young person or anyone joins a live stream on TikTok it basically removes all privacy settings and makes them exposed to contact with other people. Um, some live streams will have thousands of people joining them and following them and interacting with them and, and that can be a huge cause of concern. Unfortunately there have been cases where people in our community have been on a live stream um, with people who don't know whether they don't trust or where they've been on a live stream with shall we say monitored individuals in people of interest and, and you know these people are being monitored for a reason and um, you know that is a massive cause for concern. And I think as well, just whilst we're talking about TikTok and it is such a popular platform with young people, uh, it is important that TikTok videos protect their own online privacy and protect their own online reputation and they don't do anything or participate in anything you know, on TikTok which would create a risk uh, for their own safety, for their own privacy or for their own digital footprint. Um, WhatsApp groups can also be a bit of a cause for concern um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, the, the content that's shared in WhatsApp groups can sometimes be a cause for concern. Uh, the conduct of some people in WhatsApp groups can also be uh, inappropriate and can get out of hand and, and can often sometimes lead into sort of cyberbullying concerns. Um, 
and also as well whatsapp groups can sometimes put young people into contact with strangers and link it back to the idea of what i said earlier on about an online stranger presenting an online danger unfortunately as well this is i think uh, you know a real risk that everyone's exposed to whatsapp settings by default allow anyone to add a user of whatsapp into a group unless you change the settings so what we need to do and we need to really encourage young people to do this is to go to whatsapp settings uh, go to the group settings and just make this change that you can see on the right hand side here which is basically change who can add me into groups we need to change that from everyone which is set to by default we need to change that from everyone to my contacts so that only people who they know and trust and who they've got on the contacts list can add them into a group chat and this is a bit of advice that I gave to young people and I'm pretty much reiterating the advice that I, uh, the advice that I shared with young people in assembly recently um, if a young person doesn't feel comfortable with what's happening in a whatsapp group whether because it's things that are being shared things that are being said people who are in that group or a mixture of any of those then they need to be able to take it upon themselves to leave that group and to distance themselves and to exit the group uh, and you know in order to protect their own online safety similar to what's happened some of the concerns that we talked about so far uh, instagram um, young people if they are going to use instagram should only really have one account no shared accounts and there have been cases where uh, young people maybe five young people might share one account or all have access to one account and that can hu cause huge concerns around online conduct and can sometimes make people guilty by association if you like um WhatsApp group, uh, what, sorry, Instagram pages should only ever be set to uh, private, not public, okay? Um, because the people who you've got on your followers list become a, a contact online and they are, you know, potential risks around online strangers. Um, it's not a competition as to how many followers that you have. You should only connect with people on Instagram who you know and who you trust. Um, and if you've got your account on private, you can manage that yourself and, uh, you know, young people can filter and can... Uh, people must request to add them and they can they can and they should reject um, requests from people who they don't know um, and this was a young uh, question that I posed to young people uh, fairly recently in terms of saying well when was the last time that you had a clear out went through your Instagram followers and removed anyone who you don't know because if you don't trust them if you don't like them if they have maybe done something in the past that makes you feel uncomfortable if you don't like how they interact then why have you got them as a follower and you know it's very quick and easy to go through your followers and just to remove and to call the ones who we don't want to have contact with in the interest of protecting online safety um, there are three basic steps that um, I advise all young people to follow if they see here with this online contact contact online conduct uh, anything else online that causes concern there's three steps first of all we need to get evidence uh, because by the nature of it, some online content can be deleted and it can often be deleted quite quickly. Um, and also as well, it makes it very clear when we've got evidence so in the form of a screenshot or a photograph taken on a different uh, device. We then need to put a block in place and we need to put a distance in place, uh, whether that's blocking individuals, whether that's stepping away from a platform or a mixture of all of them. So, you know, let's say for example, if something was shared on WhatsApp uh, in a group, where you didn't like it what young people are advised to do is get evidence get a screenshot and then leave that group block individuals so that there is a distance to protect themselves and then finally probably self most self-explanatory is where their online safety concern once we've got evidence and that we've blocked individuals we then need to report that concern to uh, a trusted adult be it at school or at home or a mixture of the two um, some advice for parents and carers about settings at home. Um, first of all, your internet provider can provide with guidance and, and can actually make changes to your internet provision uh, to make it more family friendly, shall we say, uh, so that the content that's available on your Wi-Fi is uh, suitable for students and uh, you know suitable for young people, suitable for children, uh, and they can do that. Um, and if you go to saferinternet.org, there's more guidance on, on how to do that. And I can advise on that and I will give my contact details towards the end of this presentation. Um, there are a couple of apps that can help as well. Uh, Google Family Link, um, if you've got Android devices, um, allows you to set time limits, manage um, apps that are downloaded and used, uh, and also set like device bedtime and uh, lockdown device when it's uh, you know study time or you want them to have some screen, uh, some time away from screens. 
Similar to that, uh, there also is Apple Family Share. So if you set a, a family group up on an Apple device, uh, there can be some degree of management in that in terms of you can look at apps that are on different devices across your family group. Uh, you can also, again, uh, monitor activities like calls, text location, and also uh, set locks on screen time and things like that. There are other apps available, uh, but they're normally on a paid for basis and normally you have to pay a monthly fee on them. Some of them are useful, some of them are quite sophisticated, um, but some of them can be quite expensive as well. Uh, and again, I can provide more information on that on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I talked earlier on about the Safer Schools app um, and how that works. Um, so this is an app jam-packed with resources, advice, practical tips, uh, guidance to many different platforms, all, all sort of kept up to date in, in a nice, um, easy to follow app. All that you need to do to get the app is to go onto your app store, it's available totally free of charge and it always will be free of charge whether you're on uh, Apple devices or, or Android. So you just go onto uh, your app store, download uh, or search for safe, safer schools and download it and then when you're prompted you just enter the details that are shown on screen. Uh, so that is to enter the school name and the code 7675 and that will give you free access permanently for that app. Uh, loads of information all at your fingertips a real useful credible reliable uh, nice easy parent friendly app which I, I can't recommend enough um, there are some organizations that can support so in terms of law enforcement obviously we've got the local police Cheshire police and then the CEOP and CEOP um, exists uh, to put a stop to and to protect young people uh, from exploitation sexual exploitation and inappropriate imagery online that's their main remit and they're both police organizations obviously Cheshire Police and, and, and CEOP um, in terms of charities there are charities that exist to protect young people in person and also online uh, NSPCC and Childline and then some specialist organizations which uh, exist particularly around online safety with uh, young people so we've got Internet Matters, Parent Info and the UK Safer Internet Centre all of these on here uh, are commendable, reliable, uh, you know, well-established, bona fide organisations that um, I advocate around online safety for young people. And you can check out their websites. There's lots of resources, guidance, um, educational materials on their websites linked to online safety. Um, so I've tried to keep this brief as you know a brief over overview. I thank you for your time in watching this. Uh, feel free to go back and, and recap on any part of the video clip. Um, but if you do have any questions, queries, comments, uh, if you'd like any practical help, guidance, any technical configurations that I can help with, um, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. My contact details are on here. And uh, once again, thank you.